Hello everybody and welcome back to Season 27 of the Pokemon NASCAR Series. Today we're here at Watkins Glen International for the running of the Pokemon Go at the Glen. The third and final road course race of our stop and this is the last race before the All-Star Weekend at Pocono and of course World Tour 27. So this will be fun to watch here today as we're at the home track of TA2 Racing. Speaking of which... Luke Walker, one of the hometown favorites, is on the pole today. And Angel Navarro is on the front row as well. You saw him win at Road America last race. Now he's looking to win for the second straight time and his third overall win. William Brock starts third. He won this race last season at the Glen. So the top three have a lot of names that are recognizable instantly here at the Glen. And Ryan Acosta will share row two with Brock. Jacob Lawler and Josh Crasher in row three. Johnny Garner and DJ Curtis are in row 4, and Annie Thomas and Joshua Sicully are in row number 5. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get right on to the Glen with these famous words in motorsports. A cloudy day, uh, not so great day here at the Glen, but nevertheless, though, we're still going to race. 18 laps here at Watkins Glen International. This should be fun. Pace car going to come down Pear Road. And this is, again, like I said, the home track of TA2 Racing. And they look to finally win here at the Glen. We'll see if Luke Walker can do just that. Last season, Brock won from the pole, so we might see if Luke has the same luck as him this season. The green flag waves and the Pokemon Go at the Glen is underway. Look at William Brock go three wide already. Oh my goodness, William Brock. It looked like it was going to try to go three wide already on the first turn. He just wastes no time. He wants to win this for the second straight season. And now cars are hitting the wall. We have a caution. And a big pile up on the S's. Chandler Caudill was involved. John Arnett. Jay Jefferson. Big crash. Down the S's. Looks like Navarro is going to hold on second place. Unless if William Brock has a bit of a gain. Look at Brock go. He wants to get that second spot. Is he going to get that second place position? Here he comes. Maybe right on this corner. Let's see. No, he's not going to do it. But he did try, though. Oh, wow. Better watch out for that wall. Oh, man. More crashes. More crashes. Oh, boy. Elijah Gordon is stuck in a hard place. Wow, Elijah Gordon got stuck right here. Boom! That has got to hurt. Oh my gosh. This race has turned in, wow. Just wow. What a start here at the Glen. Didn't expect this to be a wreck fest right off the bat, but. Oh, John, oh my goodness. Scary moment for Ramon Seyawan. John Arnett forced him up into the wall, and then they flip. Seyawan flips upside down. Couple cars taken out. Wow, that was just a rough rack and a rough start to this race. Let's see how many cars are out of this race at this point. Gordon's out of the race. We all know that because that hard hit on the barriers. Wow. Annie Thomas just blew up her camshaft and her race is over. Joseph Romanek had a piston problem. His race is done. Arnett and Caldell are the other two that were involved in the wrecks. And they're out of the race. Back to green.
So far, no real, no real um, challenges for these guys in the front. I just saw a three-wide situation right here. This could get ugly. Thank goodness, though. Oh, man. Close call. That could have gone ugly. That really could have ended in... That could have ended ugly if they wrecked, honestly. Luke Walker in front already continuing to dominate this race. Let's see on the final corner. This corner might be a problem for some of these cars. So far, they stay clean. Okay. So no problem so far on that corner. We stay green. Oh, no. The 78 has spun around. And he collects Ballard. Jacob Lawler got turned by the 27. Joshua Sicully right here. And that's a caution right there. Well, we did get a green flag run going until that happened. So much for... Well, pretty much a clean race. Uh, Luke Walker leading. Navarro runs second. And the third place, well, top three have not changed, on this, obviously. And the field has separated a little bit. But I'm hoping that nobody else decides to wreck out each other during the caution period. Oh, no, Lombard! Goes over the track, over the fence, and a scary crash. Wow, Joseph Lombard went over the fence. Did you see that? Joseph Lombard. Unbelievable. He has the wreck of the race. Watch this. Oh, he gets slid up, and he flies off the track. He didn't hit any fans, thank goodness, but man, was that a scary crash. A very scary crash on N2SC4R's part. This is definitely a highlight reel right, right there. Wow. Thank goodness, though, it didn't hit any fans. Wow. That is just incredible oh my goodness we've had a ton of spectacular wrecks here in season 27 this one is one of them oh my goodness mitchell carter got hit too and these three cars were involved racing back to the yellow flag wow at least the wrecks are keeping us entertained. But still, though, that is just incredible. Navarro was ruled the leader, and he's going to be the leader off coming off pit row. The pit strategy worked out for Navarro. He's your leader. Navarro gets good pit stop, and he is leading this race. And guess what? Kev Shear is going to move up to second place. Green flag is in the air. Kev Shear. I wonder wh where did he come from? Wow. Kev Shear. Who knew he'd be in second place? And we saw some cars getting a little mixed up there. But, not, but they're still hanging on. Wow, I still can't get over Joseph Lombard flying over the fence like that. Wow, that was just a scary moment there. But he's going to be all right. Anthony Lopez and the 47 ballot out for the position here. Probably the biggest battle ahead of him. Here they come, Lopez and Collins going to battle side by side for position. Lopez has got it. The 20 of Kermika Jazzen got a bit of the wall, but was able is able to stay on the race. The 22 gets by the one machine, 
Able to gain another position. Oh, and that was for sixth. Oh, man. They're still getting really close. Doesn't look like William Brock's going to repeat what he did last season here at this track. Winning. But still going to get... May, might still get a good top 10 finish out of this. It looks like Josh Crash is going to try to gain up fourth position, trying to keep fourth, fourth position away from the hands of DJ Curtis. Curtis trying to fight back. Here they go side by side. Who's going to get the advantage? And now Luke Walker looks for second place. Meanwhile, we're going to see this battle. Navarro, the top two have to pit. Top two are pitting. Luke Walker leading. Josh Crash is, Crash is in the wall, but able to stay in the race. Oh, wow. So DJ Curtis did win that battle after all. Now he's running second. Luke Walker has come back as the leader. Thanks to the top two pitting, but I wonder if this is going to be part of their strategy or not. If this is not part of their strategy, it might backfire them in the face. Here come the S's. A battle for third between Joshua Sicully and Jared Lewis. And Sir Cully is going to win that battle. Oh no, Paul Barber blows up. Paul Barber has blown an engine. Paul Barber has blown up on the track. He was running in sixth, and his day is done. He's not even going to make it to pit road. What a shame. That is just gut-wrenching for the one machine. Trying to win this race, and it gets taken away from him by a blown engine. Is he going to make it safely on pit road? It looks like he did. But still, though, what a shame. His day comes to an unfortunate end. A great day gone to waste, thanks to a blown engine. Luke Walker running the continues to lead right now. The field is separated. Josh Crash still in the top five, which I'm impressed by the way. He's still running in the top five after getting hit in the wall a couple laps ago. So far, no real challenges. And if these guys and the other two might, if the other two come to pit, if the other leaders come to pit, these two might have the best strategy at the end. So they might be playing it safe here. Seven laps to go. And the 77 Lopez battles with the seven. The sevens battle it out. We've had two cautions so far today, and it's not bad. 77 goes by the 7. Well, he was ahead of the 7 beforehand, so he keeps his position. William Brock, though, is looking for revenge. Down the S's again. Has still been a very, very exciting race either way. Now Johnny Garner trying to gain position against John Andrews. I know Andrews are running behind the five, and now the 43 is trying to get ahead of him. It's hard to pass in this track, but still very possible. We saw a couple passes going off the track. Six to go for the 55, and he has so far not faced a challenger yet ever since, uh, well, the top two pitted. Now the 41 is going to battle out for the six for the top ten positioning. Trying to get in, 41 trying to get in the top ten. Going to try his hardest here. Not going to get through the six yet. Joshua Sicully might have a chance to get second place. 
We'll see if Sir Cully can gain ground on the 14 and make the pass for second. Luke Walker saw how Pichu was successful in two races in California and especially in Sonoma and is trying to use that to his advantage. Now we have five to go here at the Glen. It looks like the 7 and 77. They're not giving up. Both are trying to fight for each other, trying to fight for positions. It looks like the 7 might have the edge for now. He does. The 7 finally gets through Lopez. And now 7th place is his. Huh. wonder what's so special about 7th. Because the 7 and 77 are battling each other. Probably that's why. <laughs> that's what makes it special. Curtis is trying to gain every little inch he can get at Luke Walker's position. We've seen cautions have happened while they've taken pit stops, though, so I'm hoping that this doesn't happen again. But if it does, well, what can you do? Oh, no! Spin! 27's around when they were coming down! Now Curtis spins on pit road! Are you kidding me? Caution's out! Oh, man, I was just talking about this. Wow, it has become a problem in these past couple races. And it's not surprising it's become a problem here. And now it's going to come down to a two-lap showdown. So, on the plus side, though, it's going to come down to the final two laps. I don't know what... I don't know what Sir Cully was thinking. I really don't know what he was doing. And Curtis just lost control trying to get back on the... Trying to steer his way back to pit road. And he gets wrecked. Are you kidding me? This is just, just ridiculous now. Unbelievable. Manuel Harnett comes out as the leader. So we might have ourselves a completely different race. Wow. Unbelievable race. Wow. Just wow. Let's see how this will affect the leaders with just two to go. Brock is out of the race. He's out. He's out of the race because of the problem he had. This is just incredible. But nevertheless, though, it's going to come down to two more laps here at the Glen. And Emmanuel Harnett is the leader. We're going to go green flag again here at Watkins Glen with just two to go. Luke Walker running third. He was the dominant car today. And he's going to try his best to get that win again. But he needs to get lucky. Harnett pulls away. And look at this. Navarro is back in the top five. That strategy worked out. Lewis Rex. Jared Lewis's rack. Fitzwater spins. And the caution will come with two to go. They'll get the white flag next time by... Garner hanging on for second place. Navarro going to try to pass Luke. Contact. Luke blocks. Garner going to have one more chance to the line. Here they come side by side. Harnett and Garner going to ball it out. Garner's out. Johnny Garner on a last lap pass. Can he do it again? Can he make it through the line? Side by side, Hornet hangs on. What a finish to the line. Emmanuel Hornet hanged on over Johnny Gardner in the line. My goodness, I thought that Johnny Gardner had the pass. That was amazing. Too bad it wasn't the final lap, but still amazing. Johnny Gardner trying to pass through the six. Right here, it looked like he got him. He thought he got him. But look at Harnett coming back up, going side by side, and all of a sudden, able to hang on over the five. What a finish. Oh, my goodness. That was just a thrilling finish, by the way, to the line. Hope we have those when the white flag comes next time. Wait a minute, are they going to pit? Oh, no, they're going to pit. They're going to pit. 
But can they hang on to the lead? It's not over. To the line. Who's going to win the race? It's Luke Walker. Luke's going to win here at the Glen. What a finish. Luke Walker wins at his home track. Luke Walker has finally done it. He's finally won at his home track. Wow. It was just too good to be true with the 6 and 5 finishing. But Luke Walker has won in his home track. Incredible. Luke Walker has finally collected a win at his home track. It was just ex it's just exciting. Wow. Amazing. 25th race in the books here and it was a finish to remember. Harnett and Garner run out of fuel, and Luke Walker stays out to win at the Glen. What a thrilling finish. It was thrilling all the way to the end. Great job, Luke Walker. Finally collects a victory in his home track. That is something special. First time, a Poma, first time ever in Pokemon NASCAR history, one of my own drivers wins in my home track. This is just something special. Luke Walker needed the help of the top two pitting on the final lap to win. He won from the pole. That was incredible. Wow. I'm stunned. So now that Luke Walker is one of the Glen, we're going to get to to the all-star race here at um, Pocono Raceway. Before we get to that, let's show you the points heading into the all-star weekend. What a victory it is for Luke Walker to win his home track. Just amazing. Wild and eventful race at the Glen. It all ends with the win for the 50 with a win for the 55. Now let's look at the points heading into All-Star Weekend. And the game just crashed on me for whatever reason. I hope it doesn't corrupt the standings. I'm hoping so. My apologies for that. Let's get to the standings. And here you see Jazzin 66 points ahead of Seyo on. The lead is really starting to blow up for Jazzin. She's pulling away over everybody else. So still, uh, still plenty of time for these guys to catch up to the 20 in terms of leading the points. The rest of the field on your screen. As always, you can pause the video to find where you stand in points. That's it here from the Glen. We will see you at All-Star Weekend at Pocono Raceway.